Our next case study is a 1998 Jeep Cherokee four liter inline six cylinder engine. It was driven into the shop, to be honest with you, it should have been towed into the shop. It ran that rough, extremely rough running engine with misfires occurring and kind of a bluish to black smoke coming out the tailpipe. Started our diagnostic routine and started looking at some scan data and trouble codes. And we had a PO 172, bank one rich, again, meaning that the fuel trims are negative, trying to turn the fuel off because the oxygen sensor is screaming rich. And we had PO 300 random misfires. Looking at the scan data, at idle we had a 769 RPM. The map sensor was really erratic. It was dancing between 68 and 78 kilopascals. That means that it was really dancing between only about 12 to 13 inches of vacuum. That's a telltale sign there. If you think that you have a mechanical problem and the vehicle has a manifold absolute pressure sensor, use your scan tool and graph it over time. Look at it in the metric PID form because KPA in metric is 0 to 100. Inches of mercury is 0 to 30. You're going to increase your resolution of the data you're looking at 3 to 1. So as you graph the map sensor, you're going to be looking closer at any anomalies that will change. And this map sensor was dancing rapidly between 68 and 78 kilopascals. It would be the same thing if you took a simple vacuum gauge and connected it to the manifold and the needle was dancing back and forth. You, know, you already know right away that you're going to find some sort of a valve train problem. Moving on in the scan data, we had an engine coolant temperature of 212, an intake air temperature of 96 degrees, closed throttle TPS below 1 volt at 0.76. The idle air bypass motor was all the way in at zero, indicating most of the time that there's some sort of vacuum leak. Remember, we only had like half of the engine vacuum that we should have had, and it's dancing. The oxygen sensors pegged way out at 999 millivolts and with the oxygen sc sensor screaming rich, the fuel trims are way negative, negative 33% on the immediate adjustment to the fuel, the short term fuel trim and the long term at negative 25. The rear O2 sensor behind the cat was at 981 millivolts, we were in park. So, in a speed density engine that does not have a mass airflow sensor, if you drop vacuum to the MAP sensor, what does the computer think? It thinks load. We've got about half the vacuum that we need, so this computer already thinks this engine's under load. Even though we are in park and the closed throttle, it's still going to add fuel based upon that key sensor input, the manifold absolute pressure sensor. So now you got to ask yourself the question, is it an erratic signal coming out of the MAP sensor or is the MAP sensor doing its job? It is relaying the information on the engine's volumetric efficiency, the breathing and the load of the engine. You could compare your MAP kilopascal reading on your scan tool to a real vacuum gauge. You would find that both of them were dancing. At this point in time, we really truly believe that we have some sort of a mechanical valve train issue. So what I decided to use, because it's quick and easy, is an older Counselor 2 scope. And the reason I use this is because I really like the vacuum waveform. This is going to show me the vacuum pull per cylinder. The top of the screen is the ignition firing event when we peak when you see the top of the mountain. The bottom valleys are the vacuum pulls per cylinder. When you get to cylinder three, you'll see that it's only pulling about half the vacuum, which is indicating we have a valve train problem on cylinder number three. 
At this point in time, we called the customer. He said, we believe your engine has a breathing problem and we need to be paid additional time to pull the rocker cover and look deeper and inspect the valve train. Our suspicions are that you have a valve train problem that is focused on cylinder number three because that's what our vacuum waveform per cylinder is showing us. However, the whole bank is affected, the whole engine, it's an inline six cylinder, is affected because we only have about half the vacuum that we should have to the manifold absolute pressure sensor. The customer approved the additional inspection time and we went into the engine, we found a broken valve spring on cylinder three. So the counselor vacuum waveform was picking on cylinder three that it couldn't pull enough vacuum. The MAP sensor wasn't lying. It was really telling us, hey, we have an engine valve train problem by looking at the vacuum. It was erratic and it was low. All of these things put together pointed right to the engine mechanical problem, a broken valve spring. We replaced the valve spring. The engine's now running smooth and the fuel trims are back in check, both the short term and the long term within 10% negative to 10% positive. Once again, any mechanical problem in a speed density vehicle, just about all Chryslers are speed density. If you have a mechanical problem, a valve timing problem, a mechanical valve spring or a valve that doesn't open, a worn camshaft, anything that affects the breathing capability of the engine, you're going to drop vacuum. When you drop vacuum, you're going rich. The oxygen sensor is going to pick that up, the fuel trims are going to shift negative, and you're going to set those famous rich trouble codes. So sometimes, or almost all the time, in a speed density system, a mechanical problem will always result in a rich mixture.